In this problem, we are asked to find the average rate of change of this function j of x on the interval x to x plus h, where x is equal to 1, and we're examining it at seven, several different values of h, 1, 0 0.1, 0 0.01, so on and so forth. We don't have any information about these coefficients a, b, and c, other than the fact that a is not equal to 0. So once we collect all this data, we're going to use it to try to estimate the instantaneous rate of change of j at x equals 1. So it may seem a bit confusing since we don't actually know what the coefficients are, but let's just apply the standard definition of average rate of change and see what we get. So That's our definition for the average rate of change. So let's just plug in 1 plus h and 1 into j of x and see if we can get something that we can work with more easily. So do it one step at a time. Here I'm just going to put this all in brackets, make it clear that it's all part of j of 1 plus h, and we're going to subtract j of 1. If we plug in 1, we see we just get a plus b plus c. Nothing fancy here. And this is all over h. Alrighty, so now we just need to expand this 1 plus h squared term, Let me break open this parenthesis, and see what we get. It's not going to be pretty, but it's not particularly challenging. 1 plus h squared is 1 squared, or just 1 plus 2h plus h squared. We'll distribute the b. We get b plus bh. And this sad little c sitting here by itself with nothing to do. And we just copy down this information, the minus a plus b plus c, and once again, it's all over h. Let's break it open a little bit further. Distribute the a, a plus 2ah. It doesn't really matter what order you put the variables in, but we're going to keep the h's on the right-hand side just to be consistent. h squared plus b plus bh, plus c, and now let's distribute the minus sign, minus a, minus b, minus c. Once again, all over h. Alrighty, let's see if we can simplify this giant mess a little bit. Right off the bat we see that we have an a and a minus a, so let's go ahead and cross those out. We have a b and a minus b, cross those out, and we have a c and a minus c. So we'll cross those out. So what we're left with is 2ah plus ah squared plus bh all over h. And finally, we can cancel out h's to arrive at 2a plus ah plus b. That's our average rate of change of j on the interval 1 to 1 plus h. So just to clean this up a little bit, why don't we store this vital piece of information over here. 2a plus ah plus b. I'll we'll just erase all this. Hopefully you took good notes. So now we have our average rate of change on the interval that we're concerned with. All we need to do is plug in different values of h and see what we get. We can actually rewrite this one more time just to make it a wee bit easier. And this becomes a of 2 plus h, or rather a times 2 plus h plus b. There's our average rate of change. Let's call it that just so we don't forget. 
Okay, so we'll make a quick little table of data here by plugging in each value of h. When h equals 1, we get 2 plus 1, 3a plus b. When h is 0 0.1, we get a times 2 plus 0 0.1, or more simply, 2.1. So we'll just call that 2.1a plus b. When h equals 0 0.01, we get 2.01a plus b. And hopefully by now you're starting to see the pattern. So I'll just fill these in quickly. No. This is 2.001a plus b. And finally, our last entry, h is 0 0.0001. There we go. So these are our average rates of change with h taking on each of these different values. So now we're asked to use these different pieces of information to try to estimate the instantaneous rate of change of j at x equals 1. Well, we see that in each of these guys over here, the b is staying the same, and the coefficient in front of a is decreasing. And it looks like it's just getting closer and closer to 2. So I don't know what everyone else's estimate would be, but mine would certainly be that the instantaneous rate of change is 2a plus b. If you come back to this problem after learning about the fundamental theorem of calculus, you'll see that this is exactly what you get for the instantaneous rate of change. So there's our final answer.